Today we are leaving El Taiko. So this is going to be fingers crossed that the bike fit. And it's worth mentioning that not only the bike, but everything else as well. I to use the bike bag when you can use just the rack. We'll see how it goes. Not a good idea. The moment of truth. Will Arana fit spark? At least for now, it seems like it won't. There's still a tiny chance left. Do I enjoy this process? Yep, not. Like it's born to be here. That's how it goes. Everything is packed. Somehow. And we are off to... So no, we're not moving to Fania just yet. We are moving to a different place. So eventually we appeared a bit up to the north, near Takoronte, Guamasa, around this region. We decided to extend this work and travel thing uh, for another month in Tenerife because, well, we kind of really liked it. The reason being why I explained quite a lot about the weather and overall conditions during the first month in Altanke, north and west part of Tenerife, is because everyone believes, mostly, that if you go towards the south during the winter, you go straight into the summer. So it was a way to explain that it's not actually the case. Not much has changed here around the Caronte region because it's also around 600 meters of elevation. Up it's more or less between Anaga and La Esperanza area. The reason we chose this place is because there was nothing much left to choose. We waited up to the last moment to decide where to go and while we've been waiting, all places were gone. During the February in Tenerife, Santa Cruz, there is a carnival second largest in the world happening. So you can imagine that people coming from all over the places to participate in carnival or just watch it took everything to be rented. So we chose a rural apartment and it was excellent. Before coming here, I already knew that there are a lot of trails in La Esperanza. Kind of, I didn't know what type of trails there are going to be, but who cares if you have which right. And on the other side, more towards the north, there was Anaga, where I already knew that there's going to be a lot of bike and hike situations. And they had been there for sure. If you've been at the mountains, you already know that if you go about one 150 meters up. Actually, I would say it's 200 meters. Temperature drops by one degree. If you add 600 meters of elevation, you can just drive to the uh, coast and you will get three to five degrees warmer temperatures. The same applies if you go up. If you ride the bike to 1,700, you can do the math and figure out that might be a bit too cold to ride. One way or another, I explored quite a lot in this area and you can have a look at my heat map of this February in Tenerife North. There was exceptional moments from riding where I normally wouldn't ride to hiking the bike where I would normally hike the proper shoes and not into B shoes, but everything is just yet another way to explore an island and experience those moments. And the funny thing is that sometimes you get to situations where you use a bit of explicit words and you wouldn't repeat it in the near future. But once you come back home, you look at the footage and you understand that, well, sometimes it's not about the distance travel, but how you travel that distance. With that in mind, even if something goes wrong, it's not necessarily the bad thing. Of course, if you come to such place to just train and uh, 
prepare for a season only. Uh, that way you should avoid all those uh, unridden pathways and just go based on the heat map of what others ride and you will be good to go. What's good about the bike Scott's Park RC Pro is that it lasted without any issues. I kind of just used a few pair of brake pads, changed the rotor of the rear, yeah, the brakes bleeding, which I already mentioned. And last thing is that I had to replace the rear tire. I came here with Continental's uh, Cross Kings and the rear kind of lasted for 1,300, almost became slick. So I changed it uh, without the normal floor pump and I have a video about it as well. But in general, it just did wonders. By the way, last winter I also spent exploring in an island, just it was Madeira and Azores, Sao Miguel Island, but I had ridden there with rented bikes. I really wanted to compare what it's like to ride enduro trail bikes versus XC1 full suspension as well. Definitely in order to compare it one by one, you would have to go at the same trails in the same location and see whether you are moving faster or slower and whether you progressed or not. I'm not saying that previous bikes which I rented was very poor one, but they were aluminum and they were prepared to last long distances rather than just go smoothly and enjoy the moment. For sure, you can always enjoy any bike, but the thing is that you can travel more distances, see more, explore more with quality bike rather than just a good bike. For that reason, bringing your own bike has pros and cons, as like everything is, but if I would have to choose next time, probably I would still bring my own bike. And even though it requires traveling, packaging, bags, and all that stuff, in the long run, it's not about the uh, financial expenditure, but uh, the pleasure you receive by riding it. So it was a good match. As for the north and west part, I'm going to create videos which will reflect my riding experience in Tenerife, it's north, this time really north. It will give you a bit of a sense what to expect here, uh, what to take into account, and all that stuff than doing that. Some questions how I create the routes, whether I just copy what others ride here or I do a route myself. I'm going to cover this as well in depth, but in general I'm using Strava routes most of the time, uh, just in the morning or day before, start preparing the route for the next day and that's kind of it. Simply because if you prepare a lot of routes up front, like let's say five routes in uh, that region, and you go on the first day, you see that, all right, so maybe that place is not proper for riding. Here is maybe too sketchy and all that stuff. So you receive insights on every day you ride. So that's why I won't suggest to prepare too much routes uh, because the taste and the understanding of the rain might change every day. Like for example, there was one area near Anaga, it's the Geste. Tegueste. I always struggled there. No matter whether it was raining day before or it was dry, it's very hard area to ride. Despite of that, I was still going through that corner and trying everything I could. But normally, if you would plan routes efficiently, you would just skip those parts and uh, don't go there. And yeah, in that era, I also got my first crash in Tenerife. Actually, it was kind of the only one. So I am either improving or going into places which does not require that much of a skill. But I guess it's kind of a mix of both. So the bike is in single piece. I am as well full. The all is also listening what we are talking here so everything went fine and as you probably understood already it's the last day here in Tenerife and we will be moving back home but before doing that we will have another stop just before arriving to Lithuania so if you are interested about Tenerife riding on MTB and maybe not necessarily on MTB you can subscribe to the channel and I will cover my experiences in the near term that's it Thanks for your time and I hope to see you around. And now it's time to pack the bike into the bag.